glasses of sheep shearing gold. Follow lady, Dick? follow diddle. That you, Dick Dewey? The very same Robert Penny? <laughs> Tis as chill a Christmas Eve as I remember. Hello, Art Dick. Thomas? <laughs> you be in fine voice, Dick. Myself? I'm in need of libation on a cold night like this. Well, then we best get ourselves to Father's house, Mr. Penny. Here we are, then. Come on, then. Yeah, all right, then, Thomas. Cold. Uh, be all right, Thomas. Speak. If it's ready, cider, Dick. I need cider. I shall have first call on that mistletoe, Mrs. Dewey. I'll remind you of that when you're full of cider. Mother. Uh, hello! Hey! Oh, boy, sunny! Oh, there oh, there oh, is there. Come in, come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in. Hey! Good drop, Reuben. Oh, we shall soon see, Robert. Right then. Fetches a mug, Suze. Yes, Father. Brace yourself. You can tell a lot about a person from their shoes. Have you met the new schoolmistress? Not yet. She sent her shoe ahead of her for me to fix. So what's she like then this Miss Day? You'll find her delicate but robust neighbours. Part country girl she once was. Part educated lady she is now. You do talk some nonsense, Robert Penny. This shoe has danced on the marble floors of Exeter. Who will she marry then, my sonnies? A shoe like that needs a fancy table to go under. Then Farmer Shiner's your man. Yeah, he's been rattling around in that big house on his own for too long now. If Shiner's not to her liking, it'll be Parson Maybold. You mark my words. Hmm. The new Parson? I delivered him a great wooden box this very day. Took four of us to get it from the cart to the parsonage. What was in the box, Reuben? He didn't say, and I thought it impolite to ask. But more than once, he glanced from that box to her lodgings with a gleam in his eye. Tis a very small ship. The little of the maid, the bigger the riddle. What do you think, Dick? I think it's time for singing, sister. Ah, yeah. Wait for me. Come Wait on, for me. Right, old Good man, Elias. <clears throat> All right, boys. In Bethlehem, he... In Bethlehem, he... In Bethlehem, he was born For us that were forlorn And therefore took the scorn Our sins to bear What, Shiner saying, Father? I think he wants more. Fortissimi! Give thanks to God, away, oh, oh, the man, oh, the man. Give thanks to God, away, most joyfully. Give thanks to God, away. Ha! That'll teach ye! <laughs> Merry Christmas! 
very unseemly. Very. Uh, and are you a church warden? Loneliness and a drop of drink, my sonnies. What did I tell you? So we'll ask him to our party tomorrow night and put him back in good humour. I'm a cold. A bit more singing, Thomas, and we'll get some victuals inside you. <laughs> ah, two birds with one stone. Miss Day and Parson Maybole. Fortissimi. Thank you. I put your shoe by the door, miss. Very pleasant, singers. Excellent. Miss Day, is it? Welcome to Melstock. Thank you kindly. Uh, Mr. Mabel? Yeah, I, I trust you're settling in well. I am, sir. Thank you. Excellent. Um, might I ask you to call by in the morning before the service? There's something I'd very much like you to see. Certainly. Splendid. Um... Well, uh, uh, I'll, I'll say good night. And Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you. And Merry Christmas to you, singers. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Parson Maybold, it is then. <laughs> <laughs> Time for some eating and a small drop to keep us going, I reckon. Let's head up to the church tonight. More cider. Get out this cold. We got the eating, I'll have the small drop. Come back to look after her old father. What, old Geoffrey Day? Sound like that's worth singing for. As near a thing to a spiritual vision as ever I wish to see. <laughs> Pretty even than her shoe. <laughs> Pretty. She surely <laughs> is. We appear to be dry, Reuben. Dick has another jug on him, Dick. Where's the boy? beginning of the next, we must ask ourselves how we may best serve God in the months ahead. The world is changing. 
and we must change with it. How can we best serve our Lord in this brave new world? Through our children. Education. Education. Give them the intellectual arrows that they may go forth from this village and make God's mark on the greater world. To this end, I have appointed Miss Fancy Day as our new schoolmistress. Miss Day's talents will not only be utilized in the classroom, however, to our enormous good fortune and to the glory of God, Miss Day has agreed to play the new harmonium, which is to be installed in the church. Harmonium? We don't need no harmonium. We've got a choir. What's it mean, Reuben? Let us pray. Thank you. Merry Christmas. At least we know what's in the box now, Reuben. It happened at Flint Comash. It happened at Long Puddle. Some wheezing contraption of noise replacing the choir that have been there for a hundred years or more. He'd have looked at Miss Day in a way that was warmer than Christianity, asked Let's for. not get agitated, my sonnies. I'm sure when the parson knows how we feel, he'll think differently. Tell him now, Reuben. No, no, now is not the place. I'll ask him and Miss Day to our party tonight. That should do it. Merry Christmas, children. Thank you. Now, run along. I'd like to speak with Miss Day. How did you enjoy the sermon, Miss Day? Very much, Mr. Mayborn. There was one small thing. I had assumed that the congregation knew about the harmonium. Oh, no, no. It was uh, my little Christmas present to them. I would hate to be seen as the person who came newly to the village and, well, threw out the choir. Well, think nothing of it, Miss Day. The men will be delighted to put down their fiddles and join their wives and children in the pews. Isn't that so, Mr. Dewey? You have no objection to the arrival of a fine harmonium and Miss Day's playing of it? Well, sir, the thing is not mincing up a man's words and all, but... No, of course you don't. You're a man of music and all. I'm sure Miss Day's playing will make us known throughout the county. <laughs> well, I've probably learned to play it, sir. Hearty. I, I, I beg your pardon? Party. Uh, what he's trying to say, sir, is that you and Miss Day would be most welcome at our small Christmas celebration tonight. Indeed, it would be an honour. Uh, well, Thank uh, you, Mr... Uh, uh, his name is Dick Dewey, Miss. I shall very much look forward to that, Mr Dewey. Mr Mabel? Yes. Uh... Uh, as will I, Mr. Dewey. Thank you. Sorry. Come in, Father. Come in. Sit by the fire. Stop your fussing, Fancy. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm a man of the country, Fancy. It's in my blood. Well, you wait until you're well again. You and I both know that may never be. Please don't talk like that. Mm. Tell me about the party. Well, Mr. Dewey has invited me to his house tonight for some dancing. Dewey? The carrier? You should wait for a better offer to make your first appearance in public. <laughs> a better offer? Melstock may only be a small place, Fancy, and it's not what I wish for you. I'm quite content. How can you be? You are an educated young woman ready to spread your wings, stuck at a village school to be near your ailed father. But there are men of means living in a place like this. Mr. Shiner, for instance. Well, I believe Mr. Shiner's going to the party. Well, why didn't you say so, girl? Mr. Shiner's a man of considerable affluence. You should be getting back. You're getting ready. I bought you a Christmas present. The only present I want from you is to see you married and married well. Yeah. This could be my last Christmas. Oh, Father. But I won't go until I see you embrace your destiny. Fancy. 
since he died. I promised your mother that on her last day on earth. You make me sound like some exotic butterfly. That's exactly what you are. <laughs> you marry well, my child, and let your father die a contented man. I wondered if, well, in a manner of speaking, I wondered if, perhaps later, if, if perhaps... I'd very much like to dance, Mr. J. to dance, Miss Day. It is true. It was unfortunate this morning in church. I didn't intend to come here and cause any trouble. I'm sure we'll know that. So you'll still speak to me after the choir is gone? I shall certainly consider it. <laughs> Some cider, sir? Oh, thank you. There's been a misunderstanding, sir, about the choir and that thing you're about to replace it with. Change can be painful, I don't deny it, but it is what I have decided, and let that be an end to it. May I get you some refreshment, Miss Day? Some cordial, perhaps? What are you having, Mr. Dewey? A drop of Father's best cider. Then I shall have the same. Thank you. Long way from the bright lights of Exeter, Miss Day. Uh, yes. <laughs> They're simple people, but kind. Better do something a bit slower, lad. And generous. Well, I think we put in an appearance, which is the main thing. Shall I accompany you home, Miss Day? I, uh... It's my dance, I believe, Miss Day. Mr. Shine. I, I was just about to escort Miss Day home. Nonsense. The night is young. You get off, Mabel. I'll escort the lady home. I'll be happy to walk Miss Day home. <laughs> I said I'd do it, young Dewey, and I shall. Come, Miss Day, and, uh... You try not to step on my feet. Oh. <laughs> I snap one up. So the farm next door to ours came up for sale, and I bought it. Oh, everyone said I was mad to do it, but I borrowed every last penny I could. And then, two years later, I bought a farm on t'other side. <laughs> they don't call me mad no more. At least we's not to my face. You're obviously very good at business. I am. If there's a man between Melchester and Casterbridge who can better me in business, I've yet to meet him. It's filled my every waking and sleeping hour, Miss Day. <sighs> Thank you for walking me home, Mr. Shiner. Uh, I have everything a man could want. A big house, the best food and wine. More money than I can shake a stick at. But there's a price you pay for filling your days with business. What's that, Mr. Shiner? A lack of wife. Companionship, children, some laughter in a big old empty house. <laughs> Go in, Miss Day, before you catch cold and forgive my ramblings. Good night, Mr. China. Oh, good night. One, 
four and one and two and three and four and... No, 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 Miss Day, follow the music as written. I, I shall never be good enough to play in church. Nonsense, you really need more discipline and less emotion. You must feel the structure of the music. Please. One and two and three and four. Place your hands on mine, Miss Day. Uh. Feel the structure. Beautiful structure. Bellissima. Musica bellissima. <laughs> Bravo, <laughs> signorina Giona. I have been starved of good company, Miss Day. You are an oasis in the desert. Thank you, Mr. Maybold. Have you ever travelled, Miss Day? No, no, not yet, but I shall. I hope one day you get the chance. I have only dipped my toe in the water myself, but I have visited France. You've been to France? I've been to France. Est-ce que vous savez jouer de l'instrument musique? Oui, j'ai joué l'harmonium. Come to see you, sir. Man and man, and no offence, I hope. No, none at all. I must get home. You remember you're fetching my furniture from my father's, Mr. Dewey? I hadn't forgotten, Miss Day. Mr. Maybold. Miss Day. I do for you, choir. What we were thinking was the choir ought to be given a bit more time and not be done away with until next Christmas. Next Christmas? If we fell glorious with a bit of a flourish, we would have a respectable end and not dwindle away at some nameless, paltry second Sunday after such and such. When we introduce the harmonium into the church, it will not be that fiddles were bad, but that a harmonium was better. Next Christmas, then? No, 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 that's far too late for me. You will have a few weeks' grace before Miss Day is ready, and then the change will be made. And that is an end to the matter. Ah, oh, welcome, Mr. Dewey. Forgive me if I don't get up. Mr. Dewey, as I live and breathe. <laughs> Mr. Shiner. Well, sit down, sit down, Dick. I'll get you a plate. Mm. <clears throat> Superb piece of lamb, Mr. Shiner. Very kind of you to share it with us. Ah. Uh, one sheep less, Mr. Day. It is of no consequence to me. <laughs> Father's right, Mr. Shiny. You're very kind. Oh, nonsense. <laughs> Give the boy some wine, fancy. Tis from France. Care of Mr. Shire. <laughs> A rather fetching drop of Bordeaux, though I say so myself. <laughs> Cider, eh, Dick? <laughs> you must forgive him if my father is a little over enthusiastic about Mr. Shiner. That's his own house. He can like who he likes. My father used to be a gamekeeper on the Duke of Yalbury's estate. He fell in love with the niece of his employer and he married her. Whoa! Whoa, whoa. Smart. 
Your mother. She was cut off without a penny or a kind word. She died two years later. My father always blamed himself for dragging her down. He's made it his life's work to see me married well. What are your thoughts on Mr. Shiner? They're private, is what they are. Get on. Hold on, Miss Day. I suppose you should call me Fancy now, as we're friends. If that's what we are. What's your hand stick? You first, Fancy. You're dirtier than me. But you're a lady. Object, you could use the same water as me. None at all. And to save time, I won't wait till you have done. If you have no objections. I don't know which of my own hands and which of yours. of a towel until their hands are all wet. Nobody. Nobody. Where is that towel? Wait, Fancy. I believe you have a, a smell of dust on your forehead. I do? Let me. It is soon done. <laughs> Hold still. Dick Dewey. Is there anything further I can do for you? <laughs> Certainly not. I shall see you very soon this fancy day. Wondrous paintings and squares and nice. churches. Shh. Tintoretto, Piazza San Marco, the Rialto. And there's not a cart or a street anywhere to be seen. And who can tell me why? <laughs> oh, I'm a stupid old fool, Tristram. Shaking like a leaf at my age. Still. The prize is great. So. Right. How do I look? I'm not a man for giving advice, but if I was, I'd advise you to forget this fancy day and get on with your life. Why would I forget the woman I love? Love? You barely know her. Is there an understanding between you? Not yet, but there will be. She's destined for greater things than you, my son. Anyway, she'll be married to Shiner before the summer's out. Who told you that? Shiner's got his hat set on having her, and what Mr. Shiner wants, Mr. Shiner gets. So anything you want, it shall be yours. Mr. Shiner? Anything. 
you want, it shall be you. Don't be a child, son. Miss Day will do what she has to do. It is the way of the world. You don't know her. What would you have? An educated woman like that living as a carrier's wife in our crowded cottage? With kids and dogs running about her legs? Tis not thinkable, Dick. Now, there's the woman for you, Dick Dewey, and I hope you have the sense to see it afore she finds another. You and your father will never need you and your father. You and your father will never want. Be it. <clears throat> Mr. Shiner. One. Miss Day? <laughs> oh, lovely morning, is it not? It is. It is indeed very lovely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you going for a walk? I don't believe in aimless walking. Don't see the point of it. And not that I'd stop you, for I wouldn't. You'll come and go as you please. You'll not find me a harsh man in that respect. I'm, I'm not sure I understand you, sir. I've come here to ask for your hand in marriage, Miss Day. Marriage? I know I'm maybe not the cat you dreamed of in your girlish days, but I will be a devoted and loving husband, and I will share everything I have with you. You and your father will never want for anything again. You'll be the most important woman in the area. <laughs> what say you, Fancy? I'm very flattered. Mr. Shiner. I see that my overture is a shock to you, Miss Day, and I'll not force you for an answer straight away. Just give me your word, you'll think my offer over, and I'll be gone. I, I give you my word. <sighs> I'll make you happier than a woman has ever been. Just give me the chance. <laughs> Good day, Miss Day. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Shiner. Stay. Just imagine you, the mistress of Melstock. I haven't said yes yet, only that I'll consider his proposal. He will shower you with riches. Silk dresses from London, perfumes from Paris, diamonds and emeralds and rubies by the cartload. Stop it. Is he a good man? I believe he is, yes. Hard when he wants to be, for sure, but you don't get to do what he's done without breaking a few eggs. But they say he is kind beneath the gruffness. How's Dick? I haven't seen him in an age. That's because you avoid him, miss. <sighs> I think he may have exaggerated my affection for him. He's a little lovelorn, I'd say, since he heard about Mr. Shiner. Still, father hopes he and Anne Robert will be married before the year's out.
me fancy? Hardly, Mr. Dewey. Back to Mr. Dewey. If you have something to say to me, I'd rather you said it to my face. I have nothing to say to you, Mr. Dewey. Fancy, I've missed you. Oh, Please don't talk to me in such a way. If I gave you hope, then I apologize. I want no apology for a kiss. I want your honesty. Uh, Mr. Shiner. Uh, Mr. Dewey, would you mind leaving Mr. Shiner and I alone for a moment? Not at all, Miss Day. <laughs> I, uh, oh, <laughs> I was wondering if you'd had time to think about my offer. I've thought about it, of course. Oh, no worry, lass, none at all. Uh, I don't want you doing anything against your will, but uh, well, you never was very good at waiting. You're very kind. <sighs> I have such a picture of the two of us in my house. <sighs> Laughter, music, and maybe, if God smiles on us, the pitter patter of little shivers. Hmm. Reuben? I hear Mr. Shiner has proposed then. He has. Just waiting on the girl to say yes. And she will say yes, do you think? She's like her mother. She needs to squeeze the last bit of drama out of her thing. <laughs> <laughs> But those church bells will be ringing out come harvest time. You mark my words. I'm very glad to hear that, Geoffrey. Ruined. So, you're to marry Farmer Shiner. I fear you may have misconstrued an innocent friendship, Mr. Dewey. I have not read the books you have read, but I know it was more than a friendship. And so do you. I hear you yourself will be married before the year is out. You get over a broken heart very quickly, Mr. Dewey, if that's indeed what it was. It's not true, Miss Day. It is broken and will remain so until the day you fix it. We'll be waiting till you turn to stone, then. The door was open. I... You play beautifully, Miss Day. I will have the harmonium moved into the church within the fortnight. Miss Day, you are distressed. What has happened? A man has asked me to marry him, and... and I'm, I'm confused. I don't know what to do. I see. Um, do you love this man? Well, there are all sorts of love, are there not? I mean, there's this, the, the passionate sort that has no future. And, and then there's this, the sort that, that starts with liking and, and gets deeper with time, perhaps. You will do what is right. Miss Day! I'm sorry for coming unannounced, but I had to see you. Please, uh, sit down. Oh, can I... I have considered your offer of marriage, Mr. Shiner. And I'm afraid... Please, 
say nothing more. But I must. In all honesty, I should have been more truthful from the start and not let, let you... Let me say one thing, Fancy. I'm a fool, I know, and not versed in the ways of love. No, no, If I... you thought my offer crude and material, I would be mortified, for it is not what I feel. No, no, not at all. The it... truth is, I started out wanting a pretty face and a, a ready laugh to fill this echo in place. I'll not deny it. But the more I have got to know you, Fancy, the more I feel an emotion I've never felt for a woman before. <laughs> there are no other words for it, Fancy. It is love. Oh, Mr. Shine. <clears throat> I'll give you more time, Fancy. No, no, I... Let you put this declaration of my love into the consideration. That's all I ask. It's come to this, then, is it? Aye. Miss Fancy Day and her fancy harmonium will usurp us any day soon, is what I hear. Through no fault of her own. Nobody said it was, Dick. I know it's not a Christian thing to say, but I cannot abide this parson and his new ways. Maybe, but there it is. There's nothing to be done. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. What mean you by that, Elias Spinks? Maybe a small drop might help the bad news slide down, Reuben. Tis Sunday morning, Robert. I do see him. I do see him. Who do you see, Leaf? Them. Kissing and such in the wood. Who did you see, Thomas? Do she? Did run away from him. I squirt in tears like a fountain. You keep it to yourself, Thomas. There's no one's business. You know we can't abide a secret dick. We'll tangle him up inside. Out with it, Thomas. I'm telling you, Thomas Leaf, you keep it to yourself. It was Dick! Kissing fancy day and young. Oh, 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 oh. What is going on here? It is a mere difference of opinion, my love. Tap the cider, Mr. Penny. Sabbath or no. Speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine. Teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. <laughs> Well, well, Mr. Reed. Oh, thank you. How oh. does the old saying go, my sonny? Something about valour and discretion, I do believe. Fancy. I cannot tarry, I'm afraid. Schoolwork to prepare. There's something I must tell you. You were seen. You were seen? Tis true, then, is it, Dick Deary? You lead a girl on when all the time you're making love to this fancy, fancy day in Yollaby Wood. You can have him. He's not worth... Fancy. Have you any idea what people are saying about you? I don't care about idle gossip. Then you should do! Behaving like some milkmaid trollop. Father. You will get a reputation and no respectable man will ever look at you. It was nothing. Nothing? You kiss a man in public and say it was nothing? It was a little flirting, that's all. Maybe your reputation is not quite ruined. 
But you must never see the boy again. We live in the same village, Father. I, I teach his brother and sister. I, I can't... what I mean, Francais? Drop him. And do it quickly. Before your life is undone. Yes, Father. Give me your word. On your mother's grave. Yes, Father. to meet like this, like we've done something wrong. We have done something wrong. Leastways, I have. I, I shouldn't have done what I did. Well, kiss me. It gave you hope, and that was wrong of me. Look into my eyes, Fancy Day, and tell me it was wrong. I haven't come here to argue. You'll find something more attuned to your way of life. Attuned? Some village girl, you mean? I have a duty to my father. To my education, there are things I want to do, places I want to see. Do them with me. You know I cannot. I have prospects. One day the business will be mine and... Oh, please don't make this harder than it is. Some things are not meant to be and we must accept that. It's what has been dealt us. Never. I will never accept it. <laughs> Never speak to me on this subject again. What did that tree ever do to you, Dick Dewey? I've been thinking, Father, about the business. How long have we been carriers in this village? Well, there's me, of course, and Father. God bless him. And his father are for him. hundred years or more. And the business is the same size as it was when it was started. Aye. Tis a steady sort of work. I don't want steady. I want more. Maybe we could buy out another carrier or... or open another business in Budmouth or Casterbridge. We know nothing of Casterbridge. We can learn. We could build a new house. We have a house. A proper house with gardens and stables and servants. I was born in this house, and I'll die in it too. I want no more than I've got. That's why we're different, Father. I want a lot more. Ah! Best 
Mr. Shiner! <laughs> Just a walk for old times sake. They moved the man traps. The doctor says there's a nasty wound, but a clean one. You're welcome to stay here as long as you like, Geoffrey. Oh, that goes without saying. Thank you, Mr. Shiner. You're most kind. Just glad to be of help, Miss Day. Come on, boy. And when you are well, you shall come and stay with me, Father, where I can keep an eye on you. Isn't he a fine man? Yes. Without his help, I'm not sure I'd be here talking to you now. He saved you from the trap. He's a modest man. He'd be affronted if you mentioned it. Just show your gratitude in your behavior towards him. Sunday it is, Miss Day. You will fill that old place with new music. Miss Day? Mr. Dewey, you look very smart. How is your father? Mr. Shiny's been most kind. I don't know what would have happened to my father without him. I'm off to Budmouth to wrestle up some new business. No peace for an ambitious man. Indeed. So, Sunday is to be your coming out on the harmonium, is it? It is. I trust that the ill will towards Mr. Maybold and his plans to better the church has receded. Turkeys won't cheer this Christmas, if that's what you mean. I hope it goes well. I'm only sorry I won't be there. You won't be in church? I have to see a man out at Long Puddle Way on new business. It's the only date you can do. You cared for me just a little. You know I do. I thought you were my friend. More than a friend, I'd hoped. Well, I shall go into the lion's den on my own. Good day to you, Mr. Dewey. There'll be other occasions, Reuben. But not in church. It is what it were truly meant for. Are you happy, Mary? What sort of a question is that, Reuben, Dewey? I've never been an ambitious man, I know that. You're all the man I've ever wanted. He's a young man in love. He says things he don't mean. carrier for nigh on 20 years. I'll not knock another man's work, sir. It's not what I'm about. If he says what he's gonna do on time, we've got grace and a fine price. Well, he has been a bit over busy this last year or so. I've had to wait a few times for you to come free. There's no waiting with Dewey and Son, sir. And that's a promise. You came all this way on a Sunday just to try for a bit of custom? I did, sir. I like a man with a bit of ambition about him. for church. You do this old place the power of good, miss. <laughs> Not everyone would agree with you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Shiner would. And Mr. Mabel, too, I suspect. Susan, the things you say. It is true. 
I've watched his eyes follow you full of puppy love. Stop it. I will not have Parson Mabel's name taken in vain. <sighs> Sorry, miss. The adoration of Miss Fancy Day. <laughs> St. Paul's Cathedral itself, the sun was seeping through the stained glass with a wonderful choir in full voice. But never have I heard such music as played by you today in our humble Dorset church. <laughs> now I know you're teasing me, Mr. Mabel. You bewitch me, Misty. Do I, Mr. Mabel? Excuse me, sir. You play a tasty melody fancy and no mistake. Thank you, Mr. Shannon. But mind if I come in. It is a damp day out here. Yes, of course. I know I said I would impress you fancy, but seeing you play this morning... <sighs> Mr. Maybold, I didn't see you there. Mr. Shiner, I just came to congratulate Miss Day on her performance. As did I. Tea? I just wondered how your playing went. I was thinking of you all morning. It went well, Dick. Thank you. I got us some new business. Big farmer out over Long Puddle Way. That's excellent. Well, there's no limit to what can be achieved for an ambitious man. And are you that ambitious man, Dick? Well, I believe I am. Though it took meeting you to make me see it. It is a wet day and no mistake. Forgive me, forgive me. Look at you standing there. You must go home and change your things this minute. It won't be easier to come in out of the rain, Fancy. You can't. You entertain him? Yes. Yes. Mr. Mabel and Mr. Shiner are taking tea with me. See. Tea sounds very pleasant. You can't come in looking like that, Dick. What will they think? It's just water and mud. I'm sure they've seen both. Go home and, and, and get yourself dry. What are you doing, Dick Jerry? Is everything all right, Miss Day? Yes, yes, thank you, Mr. Maybold. Uh, it's just... I'll, I'll be there shortly. Just to carry a son all covered in muck. Not fit to set before a parson and a rich man. Don't you dare make a scene here. I won't dream of doing such a thing, Miss Day. For a while I was blinded by your beauty, but I now see you for what you are. And what, pray, is that? I would marry the lowliest maid in the county if I loved her. Nor money nor learning, nor opinion of others would force me from loving her. Dick, I... Goodbye, Miss Day. I hope you'll find what you're looking for.
some are not that. It's beautiful, miss. Red. Me. The very thought. Why shouldn't you wear it? You can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, miss. Oh, nonsense, Susan. Put it on. Oh. Think of all the dresses you'll be able to afford next year, miss. Whatever do you mean? Well, it is all over the village that Mr. Shiner will ask you to be his wife tonight and that you will say yes. And does the village know which dress I should wear? You came. <laughs> of course I did, Mr. Shiner. It's a thing of curious beauty. Load if I know what it do. Go on, tell me about the choir. Some of the younger members have been talking of not going quite so quietly, Reuben. Tis not for us to decide which way it goes. I'll not have it said Melstock Choir stood in the way of progress. Father, it's a party, is it not? I believe that was the plan, son. Then we'll have dancing and singing of our own. Hey. Let's strike up a tune, neighbours! May I have the honour of this dance, Miss Day? The honour is all mine, Mr. Shiner. May I have this dance, huh? Have I got some hand, is it? And then a dance is all I have to give. For now. Thank <laughs> you. 
You'll get hiccups, Mr. Dewey. You stay. It's a lovely afternoon. So I hear someone say. So we'll not even be friends. I could have been a lot more if you'd had the courage. Life is more complex than that. Alas. Not from where I stand. No. No, not from where you stand. I must be getting back. He's a very lucky man. Good afternoon, Miss Day. Bye, Dick. Miss Day? Miss Day, whatever is it? Such a miserable woman. Oh, now you come to the kitchen, Miss, and we'll clean you up. No, there's, there's something I have to do. Fancy? I, uh, I hear you want to see me. You asked me some time ago if I would be your wife, Mr. Shiner. <sighs> Just say the word, Fancy, and you'll make me the happiest man on this God's earth. I cannot be your wife, sir. Deep down, I've always known it, and I should have told you so a long time ago. Is it something I have said or done? Because if it is, I... You have been nothing but kindness and patience, sir. Then... Why? I know I'm not the youngest man, but... I love another. May I ask who this gentleman is? This gentleman and I can never marry, for the differences in our positions makes it impossible. Well, just... But I do believe I know what love is. Mr. Shiner, and what I feel for you is not him. Forgive me. Dick? I have an early start. I've never known Dick do. He'd be the first one to leave it on. People change. I don't change, Dick. I love you as I have ever loved you. Don't say such things, Anne. I'll be waiting for you when you get over. It will never be. You will find someone who deserves you, Anne. Enjoying yourself, Miss Day? Very much, thank you. I received a most exciting communication today. Most exciting. Can you keep a secret, Miss Day? I have been asked to become the parson for the British Consul in Venice. In Venice? I believe it. I, I had heard of the position and had asked some friends to put my name forward, but never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I could choose. <laughs>
see all well affairs with a dollop of Reuben's finest in its guts. Mr. Shiner. You're a fool, me bold. I beg your pardon? An even bigger fool than me, if that can be imagined. You're drunk, sir. And you're a church warden. She loves you. Who loves me? Miss Fancy Day. Miss Day. She loves you, but believes you are above her station. <laughs> Treat her well, sir, or you will have me to answer to. Your father's recovering well, I hear? Yes, thank you. We hope he'll be back in his own house soon. Oh. Doesn't bear thinking about what would have happened if Dick hadn't come along. When your father was all gobbled up by that man trap. Uh, no, it wasn't Dick. I, I believe it was Mr. Shiner who found my father. Mr. Shiner told him to put your father in his house, but it was Dick who arrested him out the trap. Dick never said anything to me about it. Well, he's a modest man. This is not in his character. But he, but he must think I know, and I haven't acknowledged my gratitude to him. I suppose he must. My shirt, please. Do let me go on thinking it was Mr. Shiner who saved my father when I now know that it was you. It's of no importance. It's of enormous importance. And it could have had enormous repercussions. My shirt, Miss Day. Do you know what I said to Mr. Shiner's offer of marriage? I may have heard something. And what do you think about that, Mr. Dewey? I have no opinion of my betters, miss. Are you going to give me my shirt, Miss Day? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> That's what I think. This is what I think. Dick Dewey? Marry Dick Dewey? The man who saved your life, yes. Never, 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 never happened. How could you let me go on, not knowing that it was Dick who pulled you from that trap? Why do you think I lied to you? So that I would marry Mr. Shiner and you would live in luxury for the rest of your days. You think so little of me? <sighs> I did it because I love you, Fancy. More than any father ever loved a daughter. Then why do you not let me be happy? Happy? Married to Dick Dewey, living in a damp house, babies hanging from your breast, back broken with labor, your husband out working from dawn till dusk, just to put a crust on your table. You exaggerate. Do I? 
You have the opportunity to do great things. I have declined Mr. Shiner's offer. There will be other offers. So you will not give me permission to marry Dick Dewey? Here. Yes, Charlie. I once went to the vast side of Casterbridge, miss. Did you, Charlie? And anybody any further than that? No? <laughs> miss, my dad once went to Bristol. Stand up, children, when I enter the room. Now, off home with all of you. I would like to speak with Miss Day. Shoot! Off home with you all this instant. And what could be so important, sir, that it couldn't wait another hour? Um, my heart was overflowing, Miss Day. My mind, a chaos of imagery and excitement. I simply had to talk to you. Then talk, Mr. Maybold. I'm a modern man, Miss Day. I, I believe in progress. Even social progress to an extent. If a man loves a woman. Do I make myself clear? No. You have enough in you for any society after a few months' travel with me. Mr. Maple. We will marry within a month, fancy. Mere weeks after that, we shall be strolling through St. Mark's Square, arm in arm, as the sun dips down. From Venice, we will travel the world. You are asking me to be your wife. Well, of course, didn't I say? I, I, I thank you, now, I, 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 I know what you're going to say, for I have heard it from another. You love me. But um, you feel inadequate. Well, no. Uh, but you will be my wife, Fancy. I'm sorry, sir, I cannot. I offer you the world, and your answer is no. <clears throat> Good day to you, Miss Day. What are you 
you're looking at! I just didn't fancy. Nothing was meant by it. It's a hateful, mean, gossipy little place, and I want no more of it. Fancy! Let her go. Let her go, boy. I would simply like to apologize on behalf of my congregation for that shameful display, Miss Day. You are the best thing to have happened to this village for a generation, and this is how they treat you. You have nothing to reproach yourself for, sir. They are simple folk. Like beasts of the field, they are fascinated when a peacock lives amongst them. Forgive them. Miss Day. <clears throat> Fancy. It will ever be thus in this place. You, a pearl before swine. Let me take you away, my dear. Let me show you palaces and kings, oceans and cathedrals. Even the most beautiful jewel needs its rightful setting. Yours is not Melstock fancy. It never will be. I shall not mention it again, save to say that one word from you will have us married and away from here forever. You thought about my offer? I cannot marry you, sir. You're nervous. It's to be expected I in the morning. I should never even have considered it. You see, my heart belongs to another. Another? Who is this other man? He is the man I love. And I have no chance against him. None. You are a man of Venice now, or Rome, or Paris. And that's where you'll find someone truly deserving of your love. As for me, I'm, I'm a woman of Melstock. I would have made you sing. I'd say. 
Good night, Miss Day. See? I've come to help, of course. Your hands weren't made for work like this. When were you happiest? What's that got to do with anything? We both know the answer. If Mother were here, she would want me to marry for love, like she married you for love. Another thing I wanted to say to you, Dick Dewey. What might that be? Marry me. Well, well, my sonnies. Some Mabel took off like that, straight after marrying us. He wanted to find his place in the world, Dick. I was like that once. Mm -hmm. 